हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट स्ट्रेटजीज फॉर इन्हेंसमेंट इन फूड प्रोडक्शन दिस इज चैप्टर नाइन ऑफ क्लास ट्वेल्थ एन सी आर टी हेयर द चैप्टर इज डिवाइडेड मेनली इन टू टू पार्ट इट्स फर्स्ट पार्ट इज अबाउट एनिमल हजबेंड्री मैनेजमेंट ऑफ फॉर्म्स एंड फॉर्म एनिमल्स पोल्ट्री फार्मिंग बी कीपिंग फिशरीज that is all related with strategies for animals how we can improve productivity from that side as we already know animals are also a good source of food for example animals they are producing eggs milk meat and there is also huge amount of human beings that are feeding on sea foods the second half of the chapter is about plant breeding single cell protein tissue culture programs that is about plants how by using plants we can improve productivity as we already know plants are the primary producer they do not produce for themselves only but also for others here we discuss how by using plant breeding we can improve productivity so what is plant breeding so as given here plant breeding is a purposeful manipulation that is genetic improvement of plant species in order to create desired plant types that are better suited for cultivation give better yields and are disease resistance so by plant breeding we are trying to develop to create such type of plants which are according to our need the plants which can easily grow the plants with maximum productivity or quality productivity and they have high resistance against any kind of infections before further discussion of plant breeding here we have to discuss how we are involved in agriculture from past time so conventional plant breeding or traditional farming is the term that we are using for agriculture purpose so by the use of conventional plant breeding or traditional farming we are practicing for thousand of years since the beginning of human civilization that is about 9000 to 11000 years ago in chapter evolution this also given that agriculture came around 10000 years ago at the time of human settlement started so this point is very very important when agriculture started so 9000 to 11000 years according to plant breeding chapter and 10000 years according to evolution so average of this is also 10000 years so you have to focus at this point by conventional plant breeding we can only yield a limited biomass what is biomass so biomass is a plant or animal material that is used for energy production here we have to deal only with plants in form of food material by conventional plant breeding we can produce a limited food or limited biomass for human beings as well as animals because along with human beings animals are also depending on plant productivity and in the past because of limited productivity or low productivity that was because of conventional plant breeding there was a number of famines if we discuss about current scenario so population increases geometrically and that's why huge biomass is needed again biomass here is for food so huge biomass is needed and to fulfill these needs we shifted towards better management practices that also increases yield but only up to limited extent so what is here about better management practices at the time of agriculture 
there must be suitable availability of minerals fertilizers manures proper irrigation these are the few techniques and when plants are in their growing condition there must also be take care of from any kind of infection that may be because of bacteria virus or fungus and later on at the time of harvesting we also have to store the additional food material for longer duration or for further consumption in those sites which are free from moisture not only from moisture but also we have to protect these foods from a number of animals there may also be further fungal or bacterial infection so by using these management practices we can improve productivity but this productivity is also limited for us with respect to growing population so how further we can improve productivity for improving productivity later on green revolution program is started that was in the decade of 1962 1980 and by green revolution programs there was rapid increase in agricultural output in india this program was initiated earlier by n e borlaug who is also known as father of green revolution in world and same in india m s swaminathan who is known as father of green revolution in india by their collaborative work a number of semi dwarf varieties of wheat and rice produces that rapidly increase agricultural output not only in india but also in rest of the world before this green revolution program india was in begging condition we can say begging condition means maximum grains are actually imported from other countries but after this green revolution program india became self dependent this green revolution not only meet our needs but also helps in export green revolution was dependent to a large extent on plant breeding techniques for development of high yielding disease resistance varieties in wheat rice and maize many present day crops are the result of domestication in past times and at present all our food crops that we are consuming are derived from ancient or these domesticated varieties there is also a term classical plant breeding in ncert so classical plant breeding involves crossing or hybridization of pure lines so crossing or hybridization simply mating in between two plants here what is about pure lines so pure lines are the progenies of a single homozygous self pollinated plants or we can say these are a group of closely related individuals of identical genetic constituents they are carrying same or similar character from many generations so here in classical plant breeding we involves crossing or hybridization of such type of plants that is followed by artificial selection to produce plants with desirable traits of higher yield nutrition and resistance to disease so classical plant breeding we can say is one step ahead from traditional plant breeding or traditional farming by the time there is also advancement in genetics molecular biology tissue culture and all these helps additionally in plant breeding programs plant breeders are continuously trying to obtain new crop plants we can better say or cultivars new varieties of plants are known as cultivars with desired traits so what desired traits or characteristics ideally must be present in a particular crop plant so first is about 
हायर इल्ड प्रोडक्टिविटी ऑफ प्लांट्स मस्ट बी वेरी हाई सेकेंड इज अबाउट इम्प्रूवड क्वालिटी द प्लांट्स और द क्रॉप्स विच वी आर प्रोड्यूसिंग और विच वी आर सर्चिंग मस्ट कैरी हाई क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट यार हाई क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट इज नॉट ओनली मीन फॉर देयर न्यूट्रिशनल वैल्यू बट ऑल्सो फॉर देयर लॉन्ग स्टोरेज सो बायो फोर्टिफिकेशन इज द आइडिया ऑफ ब्रीडिंग क्रॉप्स टू इंक्रीज देयर न्यूट्रिशनल वैल्यू दैट कैन बी बाई सेलेक्टिव ब्रीडिंग और बाई जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग बायो फोर्टिफिकेशन डिफर्स फ्रॉम ऑर्डिनरी फोर्टिफिकेशन बिकॉज बायो फोर्टिफिकेशन फोकस ऑन मेकिंग प्लांट फूड्स मोर न्यूट्रिस एज द प्लांट्स आर ग्रोइंग वाइल इन केस ऑफ ऑर्डिनरी फोर्टिफिकेशन न्यूट्रिय एडेड इन द फूड्स वेन दे आर बींग प्रोसेस्ड सो दिस इज द मेजर डिफरेंस इन बिटवीन बायो फोर्टिफिकेशन एंड ऑर्डिनरी फोर्टिफिकेशन अगेन बायो फोर्टिफिकेशन इज रिलेटेड विद एनरिचमेंट ऑफ प्लांट्स वेन दे आर ग्रोइंग वाइल ऑर्डिनरी फोर्टिफिकेशन इज एडिशन और एनरिचमेंट ऑफ न्यूट्रिय आफ्टर हार्वेस्टिंग वेन द पर्टिकुलर फूड इज बींग प्रोसेस्ड देयर मस्ट ऑल्सो बी रिमूवल ऑफ एंटी न्यूट्रिशनल और टॉक्सिक फैक्टर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल देयर मे बी फाइटिक एसिड टेनेंस लैक्टेंस प्रोटीएज इनहिबिटर एमाइलेज इनहिबिटर such kind of substances that are not beneficial for us so we have also removed that kind of substances during quality improvement the third is resistance to pathogens and pests so there may be a number of pests like virus fungi bacteria we have to protect we have to produce those quality of those type of crops which have high resistance against these pathogens and pest fourth is about increased tolerance to adverse environmental condition like there may be excess of salt in soil there may be less water availability that is drought may also be sometime excess of water may be and variable temperature may also be there like low temperature and high temperature so we have to develop such type of crops which can increase they are capability to tolerate in such adverse environmental condition we also have to select crop plants that have shorter maturity duration if they mature earlier or if they mature quickly then there will be quick availability of food next is about wider adaptability so wider adaptability means crops must be or plants must be adapted to grow in variety of regions for example in the same chapter this is given about sugar cane plant so there are two species of sugar cane saccharum barberi and saccharum officinarum saccharum barberi that is growing mainly in north india is very poor in their sugar content and also in their yield while sugar cane saccharum officinarum that is growing in south india is very huge in productivity as well as their yield with respect to north india when breeders try to grow saccharum officinarum sugar cane species that was growing in south in north region atmospheric condition or environmental conditions are not suitable for saccharum officinarum so that is not capable to grow in north indian environmental condition later on by practice by plant breeders they develop such type of sugar cane which carrying characteristics of both and that variety was adapted to grow in both north and south region so we also have to create such type of crops that have wider adaptability all the plant breeding processes that we discuss is not easy to implement for example huw468 that is a wheat variety for development of this wheat variety 12 years time 
taken by plant breeders for the development of this wheat variety so we can understand how complicated the process is plant breeding program for the development of new varieties are carried out in a systematic way worldwide by government institution as well as commercial companies